Hi everyone, this is Henk. Um, Michael will not be with us today. So I guess I'm stealing the rudimentals. Um, what I could use is someone to share the uh, GitHub, uh, one GitHub screen. Would be nice. I'm on a mobile here. Um, okay, I can try to share here. Give me a minute. Thanks. Hi, Dave. Good morning. My time. <laughs> uh, convenient afternoon, my time. So. Are you guys seeing my screen? Yeah, and I saw work on pull request 139. Yeah, let's look at that one. Yeah, I guess so. Is Lawrence, Lawrence, are you on? I don't see yep. this list right now. Yeah, I'm here. Okay, great. Okay, so... Going down from the top, I'm just looking at the comments that are remaining in here right now. Um, I propose deleting the word the. That's fine. Okay. Uh, this one. Uh, same thing on FIDO Alliance. Yep. Just to match the copyright statements. Okay. Um, and the architecture document relying party is capitalized throughout. Yep. Okay. Let me know if somebody else wants me to slow down if they have comments on the, the text here, but I'm just trying to go through the comments that are already filed here. Uh, all right, so here's some discussion. Um, so, Hank, you commented that you didn't like the word attestation. Uh, Lawrence gave a response there. I commented that I think Lawrence's explanation sounds fine to me, and if this was changed to be remote attestation, it would be fine with me. But uh, I don't know if Hank and Lawrence, you guys want to discuss Lawrence's response here. I'm skimming Lawrence's reply, sorry. <laughs> yeah, sure. Go ahead. So the, the, the conveyance of something that authenticated the user to the relying party uh, is not mapped to any uh, of the arrows, so to speak, in the REDS architecture. Uh, I'm, I'm getting this right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. I mean, yeah. Sorry, what was that? I, I, I didn't understand what you just said, Hank. So there is something communicated to the uh, relying party. Typically, uh, in the architecture, these are attestation results. But I think uh, Lawrence wants to highlight that the uh, thing that is, I don't know exactly produced by whom, uh, is not uh, uh, something that maps to an arrow in the uh, REDS architecture here. What is, it uh, what is it that's along that arrow that you're talking about, Hank? I don't understand? know, actually. So it's it's the uh, second it authenticates the user and tells the RP the result. So it's an authentication result, which is not an attestation result. And so my 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 so I'm I'm having a hard time tying this, but but I think that's Lawrence uh, just. So I had read what Lawrence what you said here is that it was an attestation result. So um, there's, there's... That, that the authenticator authenticates the user. And uh, and as a result, it gets an attestation result, and then it tells the RP the attestation result. So there's there's two phases in FIDO. There's a, a registration phase and an authentication phase. So uh, in the first phase, there is an attestation result, um, and the outcome of the registration phase is a a new key that is bound to the combination of the user the device and the relying party. And that new key is not an attestation key. That key is the one that's used to sign the result of the user verification. That's why I 
uh, don't think that that is an attestation. It kind of looks and I smells like that. that it, a, a, a diagram, not in the not in the document, but a diagram on a screen would help. But uh, so I'm not sure if I followed that. But okay. Um, yeah, it just it's just uh, two phases. Uh, you know, the 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 attestation happens once, uh, kind of in the life of the relationship with the relying party, where the authentication happens. You know, multiple times every time the user uh, logs in. So in the first phase, you're saying the attestation result generates a key, and then the key is used multiple times after that? Is yeah, it? yes, yes. Case. So in the attestation result, it includes a per rely, a relying party specific key that it gives to the... Yes. And maybe other stuff too. Yes. Okay, got it. So I, I'm, I'm not deriving this from the text is my issue, but maybe that's just a hang issue. But I think that should be exactly spelled out. So what are the things that map to the uh, current um, interaction models and workflows? And, and which is then, again, the FIDO add-on, uh, the frosting in the end that this, yeah. this key is generated and used. So let me look at the text here again. The relying party to know that the authentication is trustworthy. Actually, back up. Um, Okay, so it's not talking about any of the flows, it's just talking about the use case up above. Um, the, and it says it implies attestation for this, which is the relying party knowing that the authenticator part is trustworthy. Um, it supports several attestation protocols and a mechanism by which new ones can be registered or added. Attestation is thus a candidate for use in the vital protocol. Um, yeah, because so it's I don't think it needs to go into the details of keys and so on. It's just saying among the things that it does, it does use attestation. Yeah, basically that's. I don't think the intent is to go through a protocol tutorial, right? The level of detail in a use case is supposed to be like two paragraphs or something and not explaining the whole. Yeah, I, I see what you mean, but uh, yeah, okay. If you think that uh, I, I'm having a hard time matching it, I think it would be super nice to have FIDO like, explicitly mapped here. But if you think brevity is more key than the uh, uh, comprehensibility of the mapping, I'm fine. Is there, so, I think so. Um, Lawrence, as far as being able to use whatever RATS does in a FIDO context, do you envision there being some uh because you gotta you'd have to write some document of somewhere about how the glue works in other words how you actually use whatever rats does in the phyto context would you envision such a uh, document being part of the phyto alliance or part of the ietf uh definitely not the ietf okay um possibly I, i'm not sure off the top of my head if it, if it's a w3c document or a fido okay. alliance document but it's okay. one of those two Good. i i like that answer i mean i i didn't know the w3c angle but yes i like the not itf angle so um, yeah uh, so in other words I'd like to see at least an example so there is an attestation yeah. so we can use the the results of the remote attestation or something we can we can write here where, where the, my comment was evidence generation before yeah. and and but i would like to see an example use of that output so that you know what problem this use case solves effectively in the uh, end. If you're stopping uh, like directly before the finish line, I think. Take, I mean, like, like that, that's, uh, that this, 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 the key For me, the problem is to split it up here. here. So what is, can you give more yeah. specifics as to what you'd like to see? Because when I read it, the problem is the one up here about how do you put, how do you get trust in the authenticator? How does the relying party trust the authenticator? Yeah, so so I don't see how I do how I do get trust there. So what what piece of data that is a conceptual message enables me to create that trust? Where is that conceptual message that message highlighted here in in in, in the use case, not with the term sure. conceptual message because it's a use case, but but I don't I don't find it. That's so whether it's right or not, I would interpreted that Lawrence's text as saying there is something that is analogous to uh, an evidence that goes to a verifier, and there is something that is analogous to an attestation result that comes from a verifier to a relying party or is conveyed in some way. I think the letter is not true. Really. Didn't we, didn't we just 
Ah, you mean for, for, for purposes of the authenticator. Okay, yeah. Yes. Uh, okay. Because, yeah, then. Um, Lawrence, you just explained that there are two steps, two phases in that first phase. You're going to send some stuff, which is like evidence, and you're going to get back something that includes the device, the, sorry, the, the, the key that has the three tuple in it or whatever, the three tuple specific key. And that three tuple specific key is in the equivalent of an attestation result. And that attestation result is later presented to a relying party, if I got that right. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, the verifier is, uh, there's no separation of verifier from uh, a relying party here. So that means okay. the attestation result is kind of internal. Um, well, okay, so you're saying there's a combined verifier relying party and the verifier is the part that generates that key. And the key the is generated. Party, the the, okay. the the authentication key is generated on the device. Okay, so you're saying the authentication key. So, so then one of two things are true. Either you have a combined a tester verifier, which I don't think is the case, or the key is in the uh, evidence, not in the attestation result. Well, yeah. But the attestation um, result is passed between the verifier and the relying party, which is internal, right? So you only pass yeah. evidence across the wire, never attestation result. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So the key is in the evidence. That's right. Okay. This makes more sense to me now. Okay. Because see, yeah. I, this is implicitly okay. I didn't derive the mapping to the conceptual measure, and that was what the problem is. So, uh, yeah. so yeah. it is actually a attestation result, but then about the authenticator's output that is used to the relying party in there. Yeah, so then the evidence has the key and the attestation re result is really an indication between the verifier piece of code and the relying party piece of code in the same device that says, hey, key is good. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, do we yeah, need to say some way of the... thinking to get there? Sorry, so if I read this, it takes some thinking to 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 understand this, and that is unfortunate, I think. So here uh, we have. I'm, I'm, I'm just say... not. I'm just not sure any of the other use cases are any more detailed, and they all take thinking, yeah, up, don't they? Yeah. So, so what I'm wondering is if it would help in this use case and potentially other ones. I, since I can't see the other ones on the screen right now, here we say who the attester is and who the relying party is but it doesn't map to where the verifier is. And so here, if we're saying the relying party and verifier are combined, would it be useful to actually say that someplace? Sure, that's, that's like fine. Like verifier slash relying party or something like that. I don't know, what do you think, Hank? Because it sounded like part of your confusion was where is the verifier in this Yeah, field? I think that would help, maybe me at least. Um, and, you, and yes, you're right, uh, Lawrence, that the same suggestion may apply to other use cases as well. That we may want to do something similar. Yeah. Um, and I'd have to look at, at the other use cases to see if any of them have verifier or how they handle it right now. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm looking at them and I don't see that much about them. Uh, that, that has, that has, they do, they do describe the message flow sometimes. Um, I'm just going to open up in a second tab so I can see also. Um, let's see what section is you okay here use cases. So let me let me look at the teep one because that's one that I wrote. Um, it's like the it's because this one uh, doesn't have ver verifier would normally be a third device that is neither the attester or the line party, so it'd be a separate bullet here. Uh, let's look at the network one because that matches one of the other documents. I think Eric's document. Eric and folks. Um, and this one, if I remember right, this one is a combined relying party verifier. Eric, got a call? Yep. Yeah, that, I think that is correct. So this one would have to also be verifier slash relying party. Uh, I was technically in Eric in your document, it doesn't have to be in the same device. That's just typical, right? You could have a separate verifier. Um, yeah, absolutely. Okay. But this so, is. This I'm not sure if this is really stemming from uh, Eric's document, but uh, this is also Riv, I think, right? Yeah, sorry, it, it, you're right. It's a uh, guy, yes, it's also it's Riv. It's both. It's both. But I mean, the, my, for the trusted path and this, it's both true. Yeah, that's true. Right, meaning the verifier could either be combined or it could be a separate device. 
Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I think it would be useful just because earlier in the document we talked about there's these three roles and then the use cases we only mentioned two of them. It probably would be worth saying something in each of the other use cases. And so I find using um, Lawrence's as the precedent and then doing the other use cases in the separate pull request. So, so the O3 draft had a lot more detail per uh, use case. It, it would say message flow and some other things. And the, the, the current uh, tip in the in GitHub has a lot of that removed. So let me go back to the O3 draft then, if I can find that. Actually, let's do it this way. Um... Did we do that? <laughs> I'm sorry. It doesn't ring a bell. Uh, uh, I'm impressed that you remember the actual number of the of the draft version. So. Oh, I'm looking at it. I don't remember it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Why it's going slow? I don't know. Um, that's interesting. The tools bug. Zero, one, two, five. What happens? Uh, what? It's a tools bug. You can see in the versions up here, it's zero, one, two, five. It's missing three and four. Oh, I'm I'm sorry. I'm looking. Am I, have I got the right? Three. No, I, I'm saying it, you're look, probably looking at the right one. I just I can't immediately click on the link like it's supposed to be here because the the tools site didn't generate the link for it. Ah, okay. Okay, so yeah, I don't see a test a verifier in three. There's nothing in here about verifier that I see, and the level of detail is the same. Okay, switching back. All right, so still, I I'm gonna propose this one, and that we then have to do something similar in each of the other use cases. Um, I guess I should ask before I do this in the Fido case. Does FIDO require the verifier and relying party to be combined, or is that just typical? Uh, I mean, FIDO never even thought about it in that way. Okay. Um, so, Got it. yeah, I don't think it really requires it, no. Um, uh, um, okay, then maybe this isn't the right way to solve it here. Let me undo this for a second and see if I can think of anything else. Because if you can argue that, that the verifier could be in any of, you know, these places for multiple of these, then trying to duplicate that same explanation as it may be combined with the wrong party or not into, you know, five different sections may not be helpful. Maybe putting something up above. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking right now. So I like in here, I'm thinking it would be useful to just expand this sentence right here to explain, uh, you know, in each of these cases, the verifier may be combined with the relying party, or in some cases, maybe a separate entity, something like that here is a separate PR, and then I don't need to modify any of these. Yeah, but that, that's conceptually correct, but does not really help us with the use case text right now, right? Yeah, so what, what do we want to do with this one then? Because you are confused here, Hank. Is there anything that you can think of that would be helpful? Because it seems yeah, okay to I, me, I, so I'm. I think I was a little bit excluded. So talking about the the uh, thing you're creating at the keys, I think is not wrong. So the use case is we need something uh, authentication based on authentication created key uh, material, something like that. And so that is the thing you want in the end. And uh, that is what you do, you, uh, do the remote attestation evidence creation or generation for. And, and I think so if that's, I understand that's, it, oh, sorry. Um, Lawrence, if I understand your primary goal for the use case is to allow any claims used for rats to be passed in the photo evidence set of information as for a key. Is that your goal that, that FIDO can reuse any claims? Yeah, but also, and just in terms of use cases, in terms of users, uh, 
this is a this and Android Data Station. We have billions of users, real billions of users. I mean, that, that is a use oh, yeah, case yeah. that really needs to be mentioned. No, I, I, I I'm all on board with that. But the question is, you're you're mentioning it so that what can happen, right? So let's take the Android case, right? Again, because the use case means um, whatever Rats does, its architecture, protocols, claims, whatever could be used in this use case, right? And so I think we're saying yeah. we would want anything that RATS does for claims and stuff to be usable for Android attestation. Yeah, yeah, sure. And so I think it's all about, uh, I, mean, I mean, we don't have to say this in the text, right? But the intent is it's here because we want to be able to use claims that we, the IETF, specify, or at least a claims structure, even if the claims themselves are defined by somebody else. I, I mean, I... Like EAT, for example. Yeah, but also just that the whole architecture considers mm -hmm. this as a use case. Um, yeah. Because there's, I mean, I feel like I have to say this as a use case, you know, bring up how this affects architecture or, you know, this draft or that draft, you know, on a regular basis. So, um, yep. no, I think this is great to have a FIDO use case in here. So, mm -hmm. thanks for writing yeah. this up. I mean, the other way to look at it maybe is it's it's a it's a user uh, it's a biometric authentication use case. You you could you could generalize uh, if you wanted to uh, in that way because because the you know IFA and um, WeChat Pay and probably whatever Apple's doing internally probably looks pretty mm -hmm. similar. All right. Um... Hank, what do you think? I am fine with a text as is, although, uh, meaning with the suggestion that I have mentioned here, which is if, as long as it has attestation, then we are trying to be consistent in this document and using the word remote attestation. Yeah, line 332 is still open when we use the oh, remote sorry. attestation there also, I assume. Right. That was on the wrong line, yeah. No yeah, problem. so there, there was also a remote attestation on there, so. Yeah, 332, oh, you're right, uh, employs, Attestation, yeah, I didn't do the suggestion here, but I said uh, add remote into that. Exactly. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, remote is fine. Okay, so let me... Yeah, it takes some thinking, but if there is a W3C or FIDO document in some future that actually makes use of this uh, terminology here, that would be awesome. Uh, I think we don't have to solve that problem here. That is correct. Uh, we don't have to uh, flesh it out. It's a use case, so yeah. But uh, I, I think as there was always small uh, um, impetus mismatch here uh, about the um, about the understanding how FIDO really fits in here, I, I I think it would not hurt to be as explicit as we want to again can be here. But but it's fine if you, if you want to, if we don't want to mention keys here. I think uh, there has to be some uh, yeah. If we were to be more if we were to be more explicit, it would be to I think it would be to go into more detail of the mechanism that FIDO has for uh, plugging in attestation mechanisms. Because that's 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 fairly yeah. interesting and, and unique. And that's why I was asking if there was gonna be some other document that would have that glue, because I think that would be more appropriate. Just like in the network case, we have the other documents from uh, Guy and Eric that go into details. Yeah, I, I believe there is a, a, a FIDO registry document that you would modify to hook the, Rats based attestation and say something like e, you you would modify the FIDO registry document to assign it uh, an identifier and uh, that's that's this part where you're saying it has a mechanism by which new ones can be registered and added and you'd add a new one and register it yeah mm -hmm. so, so it, it seems to me that the the whole purpose of the use cases in general are to make an argument that attestation is a vital service. And it seems like there's a common theme that runs through all of them, you know, for any attestation use case really, is that there's a trust decision that needs to be made that can be made better with an attestation. Yeah. And in each of those use cases, um, if we're able to say, this is the trust decision and this attestation uh, uh, here makes it better. So in the FIDO case, that what's really happening that the attestation makes better, it allows the key generation to have, uh, to go forward based on more information, which is the device information. Uh, in the absence of that, you get a poorer decision. And, and so it seems to me that we have a chance to hit the reader in the face 
uh, with a, uh, a repeated argument that trust decisions are better if you do attestation. Yeah, that's exactly right, Peter. In one of the um, uh, IETF side meetings around the time that we were having boffs, I had made a conjecture, which is aligned with what you just said, which is that the claim that I made, I was, uh, it was a, a please prove or disprove. The conjecture is that every authentication use case is an attestation use case. Yes, and every access control decision, that a yeah. remote access control decision, is an attestation use case because it's, it's a question of these are undeniably yep. trust decisions. And the question is, when you're making a trust decision, having information about the underlying mechanisms that support the present, presenting of a, a credential or the, the mechanisms for exchanging keys or whatever, the, whatever the, the mechanics of the decision that is going to be made, attestation can make it better. And, and that's, a, I think, a theme that should be <laughs> explicitly stated in every use case. So, um, so I, in FIDO, the thing you really are trusting um, is the, the the biometric user verification that, that to me the 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 fact that it's a key is just part of the FIDO protocol. It's an artifact of the FIDO protocol. The the thing that you but isn't the, isn't the decision there really the decision to create that key? Isn't there an, a decision being made right at key generation time saying that if you don't have the right device, I'm not going to go forward? Yeah, that's true. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. And so, so, so that's why it's an attestation use case is because mm -hmm. um, the presentation of that device information is the attestation, and it's being used not in the FIDO use case, but in the key generation inside of FIDO. Yeah. There, there is a user verification done at both uh, both phases. So there is a user verification done when the key is created. Um, but uh, it, but you're right. The the the, the key is key. <laughs> No one ever said that before. Okay. So, right, so, so, thinking, again, that, so all the use cases have that theme. It's just a question of of calling it out. And and in the when I give a presentation on attestations, and I, I try to make that point is that you know, what attestation really is is a mechanism to make the other security things that have been happening already better. So I'm wondering, Peter, this section here that I just had called up on the screen. Might be good to have a sentence or two or something that it actually says that point about the, you know, it makes everything, any existing uh, security decision, you know, access control, authentication better. Um, I guess my question to you, Peter, is um, since you've given, since you've said this a bunch, um, are you interested in actually authoring a couple sentences of text that says that, um, that would be a PR here, because otherwise somebody else can, but if, yeah, so, yeah, based on where I am, I have trouble right now uh, getting permission to do that. Okay. Um, okay. So it, it, I could do it, but it's going to be slow. Okay. And I'm in, trying to work that problem so we can have a more uh, you know, timely interaction here. <laughs> gotcha. Okay. Then but, uh, uh, but, uh, one so of us can. I don't have any problem speaking up like this, but uh, right now I'm, I don't have all the permissions in place just to uh, for me to, to volunteer text. No problem. All right, uh, because I I agree that that's useful to point out, and I would like to put it up here, you know, front and center, and not hidden down inside one of these. I mean, some of these can reinforce it or whatever, but I would like to call it out as like a top level uh, bullet. You know, as you read two these, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, right. I can, because I, it is a common theme. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So I'll take a try. I'll take a shot at it. Okay. Thanks, Lawrence. Um, so I've added uh, remote to the other places that attestation appeared in here. That was that one. People okay with that? Yeah, FIDO and doesn't use the term remote here, attestation. Uh, right. FIDO uses our document the, does. Yeah, FIDO uses the word attestation a lot. I mean, there's okay. big sections on it, but it, but yeah, understanding that. Uh, okay. So I'm going to commit these so far, just so that yeah. a lot of these things uh, collapse. Um, if that's okay with folks, the ones yeah. that we've so far. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, all right. So now it is collapsed. And so now here's what it looks like again, just on the screen. Uh, 
And so is this good enough, given that the details would be in a separate document from uh, photo or W3C? I think so. Use cases don't, by division, have to be perfect. They just the uh, serve as a source for requirements. So, yeah, yeah I'm okay. Yeah. And I like the uh, overarching theme that was highlighted. Uh, um, now I can't get the uh, everything you can do, rats can do better out of my head. I don't know why, uh, but. Uh, <laughs> but but the uh, sorry, uh, it's it's in there now. But um, but uh, I think that maybe at some point we have to highlight this a little bit prominently. But but this is not our task today. Yeah, that's that's the text I'm working on. Everything you can do, rats could do better. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. Do they do that in German? Um, no, I think that's a uh, original uh, English. Uh, okay, okay. Yeah. Um, okay. So, oh, and then the last point I was going to capture was uh, details would be in a doc from Fido or W3C. Okay. And oh, apparently it didn't put it in <laughs> in firm merge. Okay, that one is now merged with that as the comment. The... All right, which one should we look at next? Um, Michael's not here. Do people want to look at 131 or wait until a meeting where Michael is here? Yeah, this is, I think, not about the content, but about the uh, YAML uh, structure. So I think we can uh, um, adjourn this. Uh, this you mean wait until? Yeah, yeah, adjourn is maybe the wrong term. So yeah, okay. uh, skip All right. this. All right, so we've got uh, three of the complicated ones. Is there any of these we want to spend time on today? So on on uh, the privacy considerations, um, uh, I mean, I wrote that to try to help help out here. I don't have a particular big agenda on it. I just okay. wrote it to help out uh, with uh, the comments that Kathleen made. Um, I'm mm -hmm. I'm willing to work on it some more if you guys want to want to kind of uh, go down th that whole thing. But it was you know it's a, a substantial rework, and there was a, a couple of people that liked it when I uh, um, posted it on the list. But um, yeah, it looks like there's. Uh, comments from people that haven't been addressed right now, so I don't know what the state is. And I haven't looked at this one recently, but I see Ned. Um, I see uh, comments from me and Ned, and I see comments from Hank and Ned. Yeah, so it looks like all of us have reviewed it, and there hasn't been changes here. So it looks like it's not ready to be discussed right now, unless there's some question that you have, uh, Lawrence, or if you want to uh, do you want to continue working on it or abandon it or what 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 are you thinking right now is there anything? i mean i have plenty to do uh, <laughs> so um i'm okay abandoning it i mean I, th I thought it was a good addition but if okay. if there's a lot of resistance to the going that direction i i, I would be just fine abandoning it okay because i'm seeing some people that don't like some of these changes here yeah um, I don't know. There may be something in here that's useful, but I can see um, some, at least that one is just a wording suggestion and a wording suggestion. So there are some issues in here. And so I don't know if we need to continue this because I've not read through this one recently. So I don't remember what my opinion is. So, okay. Um, anything else you want to talk about in this meeting? Because otherwise, you know, we can. End it here unless somebody wants to call attention and discuss one of these things. I think Hank, you and I are going to chat about a couple things later today. So, on your other documents. So, so uh, I have some some questions um, and on the uh, endorsements. Uh, Actually, we can also look at issues. 
Yeah, yeah if you want, we can look up uh, 94, but otherwise I'll go back to the issues and look at other things there. Yeah. Um, so I'd actually like to ask individually where people are on symmetric keys for attestation. That, that's one thing I can't, I don't have a read on. I, I pretty pretty much have an idea of what Ned thinks. He seems to be okay with symmetric keys. Um, but Dave and Hank, I don't know. Um, Michael seems to be opposed to them. Uh, uh, so I know- Need to understand the question symmetric. better? <laughs> Is it okay? Ahead, is it okay? Is it okay to use symmetric keys for attestation? What do we mean by using symmetric keys for attestation? HMAC. No, I don't know what it, what it, you use them how. Um, the attestation key, the the attestation key material that's put into the attester, uh, is a symmetric key, and there's okay, no gotcha. there's no so PKI. Saying, so you're saying the signing key that is embedded into a device? Yeah is a symmetric key yes and it's symmetric between what the manufacturer and the device is that uh it's the key the key used to sign out of station evidence i understand but so, uh symmetric so usually means that the, it's also shared is it shared here or is yeah it... yeah I, 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 the verifier has to have the same key okay, gotcha. gotcha so it's symmetric between the verifier and the attester yes um, I don't see any problem whatsoever. It's just a question of policy at the um, right. appraisal end. If you're okay at the appraisal end with uh, a key that's been a uh, symmetric key, so you have to implicitly, in creating that policy, understand how those keys are put into place and how they're protected, um, it's really no different than having a, um, uh, a different keying structure. Yeah, I, I agree with Peter. Um, I think what you can't necessarily do is you can't assume that uh, since it's shared that there's not a proof that it came from one end because it could have come from technically either end because it's shared but in that sense right. it's uh, like just a a special case where the identity is two which is often like they're uh, the verifier themselves uh case two of the uh what do we call it the daa the anon the anonymous attestation you can't tell for sure you just know it's one of them it's just a trivial special case and so you don't I, get I any agree special, with answer. You don't get any special uh, um, trust in, in a um, asymmetric key because you have to worry about who had access to that key. How was it generated? Was it shared with anyone else? Can somebody else be using it? Right. So um, well, that it, part it I disagree with. To, that part what, I disagree with. That? Yeah, because if you have what? hardware that does ge that generates keys inside, as long as you trust the hardware, then you know that the key is never well, going well, no, inside the that's just it. You're, you're making a, a decision outside of the fact that it's an asymmetric key, All right? So you didn't get anything extra for having an asymmetric key uh, yeah. by putting it in the firmware. You, you know, no, it could I disagree. Have been a symmetric key that was put in there. I disagree because um, if you have a symmetric key that's in there, at least as long as the symmetric key is shared between two places, then you know it had to have come out of there. With an asymmetric key, you can have a guarantee that it never came out of there in the first place. It never went into there. It started in there. Yeah, and but, never came but, out. but where was that key used, and how, where was that key exposed, and could that key have been extracted somehow because of a trust issue in that device? So it's not by virtue of it being an asymmetric key. It's by virtue of you believing that where that asymmetric key is used is safer. Um. I'm not sure I agree with that because with a symmetric key, you is, you inherently have to have a way of putting it in or taking it out. With an asymmetric key, you don't, and so an asymmetric key can be strictly stronger than a symmetric key as far as the the level of trust. Yeah, but the asymmetric key has a protocol that was used to generate the key that's being used for the session, and so um, and not it, the private it key. It really is a, not not the private it, key. But, but, the it, but, the, but you're you're assuming that that private key is not available or it's a good quality private key you know, there's lots of assumptions that you're being that you're making in there that don't flow from the fact that it's a, uh, um, an asymmetric key but other qualities of it right but i'm saying there's one quality that is uh, that is uh, demonstrably better right which is the part that um, you don't have to have any way of extracting it or inserting it and so all other um, things being equal that one is is a significant um, difference yeah, well, I, I'm, I'm glad the, I think it's off topic, no one cares, but I, I would be glad <laughs> to try to convince you otherwise and yeah. show you at a deeper level why uh, I think that it doesn't really matter. It's, it's really the other issues outside of the key to 
technique. And, and I think one of the things about the asymmetric keys is that given that some of the assumptions that we're making about the environment um, are not really valid, the asymmetric key gets benefits based on the kinds of things you're saying. But if, if we were to address them in other ways, then we're back to the, maybe they're being equal, yeah, except for the so, management issues. So to Lauren's qu your question, um, I don't think I have any inherent problems with symmetric keys, if that answers your question. Yeah, okay. Um, Hank? Yeah, I think the architecture style tries to be agnostic of that, uh, and that is good. Uh, but I have not skimmed for asymmetric in the text right now, so I made a full text search. Um, no, and asymmetric is not in the text. So uh, yes, I think the type of key used is out of scope here, actually. I think, therefore, symmetric keys are totally fine. Also, yes, there being some baggage, but symmetry has some uh, overload, uh, um, some, some, some overhead um, um, to be done because you have to create symmetry. Asymmetric keys have some logistical advantages that might be interpreted as being more uh, trustworthy or more, more higher security assurance or something. But uh, in the end, I think the type of key material does not play any role here uh, as long as you treat it appropriately. Right. I so think I agree with Hank's point that, it's, that the type of key is actually out of scope for this for this document. Yes, the, the, the Meaning, one the is a group shared key or a private, sorry, a asymmetric pair or a symmetric key. I think that level of detail should be out of scope. I, I, I'm convinced by Hank's argument. Yeah, um, I, I just trying to I'm just trying to understand what people think because I, I yeah. I don't really know. Um, with, uh, sometimes I don't know without asking. So <laughs> that's, uh, uh, you know, don't don't jump to the conclusion of what I want to put in the document. <laughs> um, yeah, <I'm> <laughs> uh, so okay. the, the one, uh, uh, so the, the, so the, then there's one other aspect here is, um, uh, you know, it can be that the verifier talks to the endorser. The key is not actually transferred, but what happens instead is the endorser runs a verification service. So basically, the the key identifier and the hash go to the endorser, and then the endorser um, doesn't let the keys loose, doesn't let the verifier have the keys. Instead, it just gives a, a result and says, "Yeah, that signature verifies." So it's a sort of a signature verification service. Then I would say it's not an endorser; it's a verifier. Yeah, but it's provided by the endorser, so now the endorser and yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. verifier yeah. will collapse no, somehow. It's, uh, it's not provided by the endorser, it's provided by the same entity that provides the endorser. Yes, yeah, sorry. Yes, you're, you're uh, okay, I see. Yeah, just, but it's okay. not part of the endorser role. The endorser role yeah. is something yeah. that, the, that just endorses things. It doesn't actually provide attestation results. Yeah, the, the, the two things, the attestation service and the endorser are two roles that are in the, yeah. uh, I don't know, upstairs by bureaucracy. They, they are non, non, less volatile than the attesters yeah. and the so reply parties. The, the, the difference in the roles, again, I'm purely talking about terminology. The difference in the roles is that the verifier is the, uh, between, that the endorser never sees the current values of claims. The verifier does. If it sees it, it's called a verifier. If it doesn't see it, if it's just saying, um, I vouch for the following key. So for example, a typical endorsement would be, I have a manufacturer's key or something like that, that then vouches for the key embedded in the attester, right? That would be an endorsement. An endorser just provides, I endorse the following key and, uh, and metadata, uh, if it exists, I can't see the current state, but I endorse the following key and some uh, potential claims about that device. So the the signing service, this the signature verification service that I'm trying to understand is if if it's part of a verifier or part of an endorser, mm -hmm. what it sees is a, a key ID and mm -hmm. a hash of the claims. A hash of the current values of the claims generated by the attester. Yeah, the the, the that's the, a verifier. I call that a verifier. Yeah. Okay. That is a so part so the so the way to phrase that is the verifier can be split between uh two organizations uh yeah where the manufacturer is doing part of the verification and um i don't know some other third party uh maybe even the relying party is doing another part of the of the verification yeah i think that's accurate um another okay. example where you could have split verifiers um, and let's say you have a layered attestation or a composite device attestation. We have multiple claim sets in the evidence. 
you could have a different entity that does the verification for each claim set, right? That's another example where you could have split verifiers. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so you can have a multiple, you're just going to have one master verifier that gets yeah. all its inputs and policies from multiple endorsers, or you have multiple verifiers that have uh, each do their own part and get individual sets of endorsements and work with them. Yeah. So uh, yeah. both is possible. I, I agree. And, uh, it, how you want to do it. Yeah, it can be complicated, especially since we have cases with multiple claim sets in the evidence, just like, you know, layered attestation and composite device or, you know, composite attester type stuff. And so you can have complicated stuff on the verifier side too, just like we talk about in the document, complicated stuff on the tester side. Yeah, okay. Um, so then my next question is um, uh, back to symmetric keys. So uh, I believe endorsements have to be confidential sometimes because of the symmetric keys. So they can't just be... A they can't just be a signed document. They have to have confidential con confidentiality sometimes. Because you keep saying sometimes, I think I buy your argument. Yes. Yeah. Like I, I would say that's a very much a, a use case dependent yes. question of whether or not any of these communications have any confidentiality concerns. So if you're going to have, let's say, a, um, a attestation that provides a lot of detail about the system from top to bottom, um, just the attesting of that information may have um, confidential requirements because you don't want to barf out to the network everything about that system. Right. But in other cases, maybe you don't, especially if it's uh, something that's a, a, a commodity device that you don't gain any extra information from keeping that. So why go through the cost of keeping that secret? So right. part of the use case that you're, you're defining wherever you're using the attestations, you have to look at all the different communications that are happening and say what needs to be protected and how. Some of that uh, signature is enough. Some of the signature might not be necessary. You know, some of it uh, requires to be um, uh, encrypted so it's for confidentiality and the, the type of encryption might matter greatly. And it might depend on uh, why, what the use case is for her using. Is it something in your administrative domain or is it something across with some stranger domain that you need to introduce yourself? You know, so there may be uh, different things that you might, might be willing to do in one and not in the other. And so there's a lot of different variability in the question that you asked that can only be answered in the context of the use case. Right, but the yeah. document goes into confidentiality in lots of different places for lots of different reasons already. And now, here's the sentence that, that says, Peter, what you just said, and at least one person said they were just on the phone. Many claims and attestation evidence and attestation results are potentially PII depending on the end-to-end -end use case of the attestations. That's the one that says what Peter was just saying. Yeah, but it doesn't say what I was saying, which is that right. um, you need confidentiality for the key. Um, well, the, the key is not really part of the attestation. Confident I mean, it, it, I think that in general you're saying that um, for any time that you're going to use encryption of any kind, while that key is being used, it needs to be um, protected. And if you're going to ever pass that key over some sort of wire, it needs to be protected. So that's a confidentiality concern on the use case of cryptography, not so much attestation. Yeah, I agree with that. I think, Lawrence, a better way to phrase, I think what your question is, right, is the current privacy considerations text talks about evidence and attestation results and includes discussion of confidentiality of attestation evidence and attestation results, okay? Um, which you're pointing out that there's no text in the privacy section that mentions endorsements. And I think what you're getting yeah. at is to what extent should endorsements be mentioned in the privacy consideration section? I think that's the question you're implicitly asking. You're, ta you're talking about a use case where it sounds like you're thinking that an endorsement includes a key itself. I'm not sure that's the case, but I'm not sure it actually needs to be the case. You may still have a valid question about whether there's anything in an endorsement that might be considered uh, private information. And maybe there should be some mention in here about, you know, in some cases, endorsements themselves may have some information in it that's that might be considered PII. You know, if you're endorsing a particular device with more information in the endorsement than some other device based on, you know, the identity of who purchased it or something like that, then it might, if you were doing that in the use case, then you would have some confidentiality um, issues potentially with uh, that use case. And so it might be use, worth mentioning endorsements in here if that's what you're getting at. Um, I, I think it's still bigger um, uh, and maybe need some sorting. Um, I uh, wrote an email that, that discussed primary trust flows versus secondary trust flow. 
um, primary trust flow being about establishing trust in the device. That's the classic attestation problem. Secondary trust flow being about confidentiality on all the different uh, arcs in the diagram. Um, and there's, t there's, if you look at the trust section uh, of the document, and you can sort all the paragraphs into either are they discussing primary trust flow or secondary trust flow, or this and secondary one being about confidentiality. And it's it's not even inconsistent. There's things that are where the secondary trust flow is, is sort of uh, prominent, and and the the primary trust flow is not discussed. And I mean, I have an issue filed for this. Um, uh, that uh, um, I uh, you know maybe I'll write some text for I I don't know but I I think um, uh, I think that the, that you kind of need to look at each you know each message flow and look at at it for both the um, confidentiality and for the um, you know the, the main purpose in attestation. Um, Which I think is fine. It is that's such a general statement, but but maybe making it explicit and talking about all types of conceptual messages here uh, makes sense. Um, we should not imply it. I think that's why I'm hinting at. We should make it explicit, and uh, I think it's relatively obvious that every use case can mandate some obfuscation for a conceptual message because it is confidential. And, right. and just, 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 but you know, there, there, there is a lot of text in there about this confidentiality and the yeah. establishing trust before, you know, so you can have a have the confidentiality. There's a lot of text in there, paragraphs and paragraphs yeah. of it. I mean, so what you're really advocating is a, a statement, something about sound engineering. I mean, really, what you the, the the issue is in the process of of doing attestations, all the components are are communicating with other things, and you really need to reason through. What's the purpose of each one of those communications, and what are the security concerns of that communication mechanism for the purpose of that little subpiece of the whole attestation problem? And I have no problem with that. That's absolutely what needs to be done in any kind of engineering of building one of these systems. Yep. Okay. So, did that answer your question, Lawrence? Uh, I, I think so. Close so <laughs> you got what you needed. Yeah. So I'm. I'm. Uh, I'm. I think I have enough information now to propose a change, uh, some some text to run endorsements to address the things that I want to address. Okay. Um, uh, you know, my my sense is that, um, well, your 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 uh, insight that we can split the verifier, uh, that that's really helpful in in reframing endorsements for me. Okay. Yeah, I mean, so what you want to think about, I think, as well, is in, in you know the classic uh, confidentiality, integrity, and availability aspect of all these pieces that need to happen uh, for an attestation to be successful. Where do each of the, where does confidentiality fit in? Where must integrity be um, yeah. a question? And, and when must things be available as well? Yeah. If you can interfere with the endorser in some way, you can yeah. really interfere with an attestation. So all of those aspects of a general security discussion on all of the interactions could be appropriate. I mean, it would make the whole thing very yeah. wordy, but I, I, I think really the, it, it's all bundled under the sound engineering, so sound security engineering of the mechanisms involved in. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think we're, we want to discuss the, you know, integrity and confidentiality uh, of all the flows. I mean, right now we've, we've done, we've done uh, maybe on three quarters of them. Mm -hmm. But not uh, all of them. There's there's some gaps in there. Um, mm -hmm. But just to go back to my comment about endorsements, um, uh, I was you know at one point I was proposing calling it verifier input because I didn't think that endorsement uh, the the general conception of endorsement was was uh, big enough and the, the the way people thought of endorsements I didn't think was big enough. Um, right now I think. Uh, Moving away from endorsements is probably a little bit too traumatic, um, and uh, because it's I see it's used in a lot of other documents now. Um, but I do think we need to uh, be a little bit more open in general and and uh, say endorsements can can carry symmetric keys, for example. I I, I think that needs to be clarified. So that's I'll, I'll I'm going to attempt some, some text along that, those lines. So I'm not okay on, on that particular point. I don't understand why an endorsement would ever carry a symmetric key. I can understand why it might carry some type of a key identifier, but not the key itself. 
because we have uh, attestation provisioning processes and these are out of scope today, but the arrow from the endorser to the verifier uh, would at some point have be used also for provisioning and then keys would be flowing down that edge yeah. of the graph. But uh, at the moment, I, it does not I think I disagree with that. Yeah, I, agree. I think again, this gets back to the, uh, the question of the attestation is about some trust decision being made. The mechanics of installing a key or something like that is really another kind of use case inside the attestation mechanism. Yes. Yeah, it's a I, use case. I, exactly. I, I agree. It is the key provisioning is not part of the endorsement itself. Yes, but uh, but, but but taking on Lauren's point of view again, if he looks, uh, sorry, I'm putting words in your mouth. You can push them <laughs> out. Uh, so, but but I think when Lawrence looks at the at the diagram, there is an arrow between endorser and verifier, and at some point, due to provisioning on this arrow, keys travel, but not with us with our endorsement today. And so Lawrence is worried that this is out of scope. But no, it is not. It's just another semantics put to that arrow when we come to the attestation provisioning to rechartering. Yeah, I'm I, I, again. I'm going to make a, my terminology point here, um, which is that the key provisioning does not come from the endorser. The key provisioning may come from the same entity that runs the endorser. So just like we have, you know, verifier yes. owner that supplies the policy, and maybe the endorser owner that puts it into, say, the verifier or something. But it's not the endorser role. So it's like right. the difference and, and the between, the between, revolve, be, between the may... verifier owner and the verifier. I agree with all with that, and I would go one step further and say that it, it may involve a little attestation unto itself. That you know, the, uh, in order to provision the key, you may want to uh, provision one of the, or, or attest to the, that device, which is not the whole reason you're doing the attestation in, in the greater use case. So uh, I I think key material and nonsense are the two most critical things in all of attestation. You can't do attestation without key material and a nonce. Mm -hmm. You can do, you can have no claims, but you, uh, or you, uh, or the claim is just one claim that's a nonce. So I, I believe discussion of the key material needs to be in there. We have pages and pages of discussion on nonces already. Um, my sense is that uh, because TPMs come with keys that uh, there's some, you know, need to you know, less need to discuss them, uh, but in the TE world and in the some of the IoT worlds, the the, the key setup is still a big deal. Um, my sense also is that all communication that the, the 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 arrow, the endorsement endorsements arrow from the endorser to the verifier, covers all communication from the endorser to the verifier, all of it. That there's not some extra little side channel that keys flow on it, and even if there was some little side channel, that if there was, even if there was some separate channel that keys float over, the keys are so important in attestation, so critical to the verifier that they need to be mentioned in the diagram. So, so I'm saying that the keys come from the verifier owner, not the endorser. Now, you talked about a case in the, a minute ago where there's a verifier that might be more complicated. There's might be two layers of verifier, and one is actually run by the same organization that runs the, runs the endorser. And so it's that secondary verifier that's kind of sitting over here that's the verifier owner of that other verifier that configured that does the key provisioning to that other verifier. It's by the same entity that runs the endorser or whatever, but it's not part of the endorsement line. It's part of a key provision line that comes from the verifier owner to the verifier that is not shown. All of these have a key provisioning line that comes into each of these three. The key provisioning line isn't shown right now because everything has a key provisioning line. Oh. That's how I look at it. Again, that's a terminology. I, I, I agree with that mistake. perspective. And, and I think that's what good. might complicate it is if you have some sort of uh, proprietary manufacturing protocol that's developed, uh, it might blend some of those lines together in whatever protocol is created. And, you know, that might be good or bad. But it's it's common yes. to have keys in the endorsement, right? Um, the public, I'm not sure the public it's common key. to have keys in the endorsement. Is it common to have a public key? I'd say it's common to have key IDs. And in some cases, the key ID may, in fact, be a public key. But it's certainly common to have a key ID. I don't know that you need the full key. Like, the endorsement may just have uh, the key fingerprint or something in there. It just depends on what your protocol is. You know, for example, the endorsement might be as simple as I take my endorser private key, you know, I generate a certificate that signs the attester's uh, public key, but then I don't put the public key in there, I put the key, the public key fingerprint because I've impressed that out. 
And the endorsement is just a certificate or a certificate chain, maybe. Well, in, uh, certificates have public keys in them. That's yes. really common. Yeah. And then in theory, your protocol might compress it out if the public key is obtained, it, it can be looked up from the key ID. I'm just saying that depends on the protocol. So. Uh, yeah. Hash of pub key is quite common. A resolution services would even be endorses probably. Yep. Well, so, say, that, say that again. Sorry, uh, the, the resolution service would be provided by the entity that is also providing an endorser. I'm trying to use. Yeah, I, that's better for it. <laughs> Uh, so some organizations maintain lookup services that, given a key ID, they will return the public key. Yeah, yeah, okay. um, Intel is an example yeah, yeah. of an organization that does that, um, that, and they call it the PCK service, if I understand the terminology right. And so right. you can say, here's this thing, and I can get back, you know, the endorsement of the cert chain or whatever for that key ID. Okay. I think the thing to bring it back to the attestation is that this is all. Uh, implementation detail for a use case on particular attestations. And aside from the fact of saying that, you know, there's quality of endorsements and things like that, we shouldn't be talking about the low level mechanisms because there's so many different ways that it could be doing and it would be wrong to prescribe a particular way that we think it ought to be. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Not prescribing. I, We're trying to take into account the different angles and want to cross very popular solutions that are on this table right now. So I think that is more like we are talking about the deep life here. Uh, it's not about being prescriptive, but being inclusive right. and not pushing them out by an arbitrary text decision here. Right, and it's about somebody reading this, trying to figure out where the keys are, are flowing because the keys are so important. And if someone doesn't understand, you know, doesn't understand all of these details, uh, they can't, the can't keys you can't figure where out where the keys the flow varies by the particular solution, as Peter was saying. I, I am going to observe that we are over time, and so yeah. there may be people that have hard stops, though. Yeah, yeah, we can. But, okay. Yeah, but least, yeah, we did not you, progress with the document very much, but I think it was a viable point. Yeah. Go ahead, Hank. Yeah, we, we did not progress with the document as much as we could, but I think this was something that was bugging quite a few attendees, and I think it was worth a while yeah. to speak this out loud and give also Lawrence a chance to address his three items that he really wants to have addressed here, because I think this is worthwhile. In the end, it will create better text, but probably next time. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay, we need to wrap up, guys. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. All right. I'll talk to you next week. All right. Yeah, see you next week. Bye. Bye-bye. Fine, thanks there for sure. Yeah.